Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hot Topics. If you will, just give me one second. Uh, have audio technical difficulties over here. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. We get this audio straightened out some. I was going to check this before we went live, ladies and gentlemen, but we didn't. So if you will, just give me one second while we... And it's bad that... I want to say welcome to everybody to Hot Topics. We will be talking about Juneteenth this evening. Um, if Will, ladies and gentlemen, if you can hear my volume, let me know that you can hear it because right now I can't hear anything. If you can, please let me know that you can hear my volume because right now I can't hear anything. Chat room, if y'all could please, private room, let me know something. I can't hear anything. <clears throat> you can't hear me. Okay, let's see if we can find a reason why come I can't hear what's going on here. Give me one second, guys. I hate this. Hmm. Still nothing on my end out here. Give me one second. Hmm. And you guys can still hear me good? Control room. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> we're going to say welcome back to Hot Topics. Right now, I'm having technical difficulty as far as on the audio end, on my end. Once again, we want to say welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. This evening, we'll be speaking with Trav P. He's seen the, um, the Hot Topics. Did several days ago in reference to the Juneteenth down in Greenville, South Carolina, and the things that the guys down there were doing. And he contacted me. And he told me, he said he had some information he wanted to discuss this evening with us in reference to Juneteenth. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have not had a chance to go to a Juneteenth event, I mean, some events are still going to be going on, even though the bulk of it was last week over the weekend and today. And it's ironic, just today I had a person to tell me, and it was a Caucasian uh, person, they, they told me, they said, what is Juneteenth? So I sent them over a clip, and the clip uh, was to give them, actually what you've seen in the background behind me now is exactly what I sent over to them, something just to give them a little in-depth detail as to what Juneteenth is truly all about versus me having to go down and give my whole spell. And I also invited them to come over to the uh, Hot Topics Urban Voice Media tonight and watch a little bit as we talk in reference to the rise of Juneteenth. Juneteenth is the oldest national celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States and its traditional re remembrance of the June 1980, excuse me, yes, June 19, 1865, when the enslaved in Galveston, Texas, received word of their freedom under the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, freedom was already given two years prior, but the slave owners and the people with uh, big money there tried to keep it a secret because they was afraid they would lose so much of their business if the people that they held captive there, and I said captive for a reason, would get word they would leave. But once the word, you know, couldn't be held back no more, that's when Juneteenth was originated and the rise of Juneteenth is here now. With me saying that, I have Trap P, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, please buckle up. Because this brother right here, 
he's in depth with knowledge and knowledge he is trap p well, my brother well, how you doing brother doing all right man feeling good tonight man feeling good at the round table session tonight now nah, we on hot topics tonight baby we on hot topics tonight oh yeah yeah man so what was it about the uh the um the the hot topics the other day what was it about it that grabbed you to say hey i, I want to come speak about this thing tonight well you know when i saw you speaking on it man um it just got me thinking you know um what it really is so after your show, I started calling a lot of my elders, man, that's left in the family and just asking questions about, you know, coming through a time period of history, you know, coming up through Jim Crow and being older. You know, I asked them, had you ever heard of Juneteenth? And, you know, all of them referred to me as, well, this is something new. I never heard of it in my life. So it just made me dig deeper into what it's really about and really understand how we came here today to uh, nationally celebrate it as a federal holiday. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, when did you first hear about Juneteenth? Um, well, I would say five years ago. Um, five years ago, it became more trending um, within the last three years. So um, I knew about the history that led up to Juneteenth, but the actual uh, date of Juneteenth, I would say fairly about five years ago. As you see in the pictures in the background, um, uh, especially pictures like that one right there, what, what does that, pull it to the side so you see, what, what does that state to you, that, that picture right there? Um, African heritage, African culture, uh, ancestry, um, pre-slave. What does the mean slave mean to you, Trap? Um, those that came by way of West Africa, um, in the transatlantic slave trade, uh, that reached the borders of Georgetown and I think 1611 or 1614, I'm not sure, but, um, that began um america as we know it from from the 1865 to now what would you feel is the progression of juneteenth that that's came this they came out of galveston what would you see that that's actually progressed well when you talk about uh juneteenth um june 19th 1865 well you have to put that in this proper context uh with history and the particular story at hand like you say that's about um a small town in texas um when we look at what brought about the freedom of slavery we have to go back to uh the uh emancipation of proclamation which was issued in september the 22nd of 1862 so Abraham Lincoln issued that in September 22nd of 1862. That New Year's, which was January 1st, 1863, was when it went into effect. So from a history perspective of family being black in America, you know, my culture and my family, we always got together on New Year's. That was when we popped the guns. That was when we celebrated. We did the fireworks. We always held hands and prayed leading down to the countdown. So when you go back to the New Year's of 1863, that was when slavery was abolished through the proclamation of emancipation. So we celebrate that. So in that context of history, when you're talking about two years later on 1865, June 19th, we have been free for two and a half years. So the context of uh, Galvin, Texas was those were slave masters who rebelled against the union, who rebelled against the Civil War, who rebelled against uh, Abraham Lincoln saying we are free. So they fought 
and stood ground to say that if you want us to leave our slaves free, then you got to come down here with your army. So General um, Granger took his army, his soldiers. In those soldiers, you had brothers who was free, who came to be able to fight for the Union, came over the hills for those in Galvin, Texas, to only realize you free. And they say, oh, thank God. But they say, but you've been free for two years. You just didn't know it. So we got to put that in context of history. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I mean, did you, when, when you, when you started gathering knowledge on, um, on, um, black history, you know, how did it make you feel, you know, coming from public school, church, you didn't get it in church. You didn't get it. You didn't get it in public school. You started getting your information from what avenues, from books or things that you've seen online. Yeah. Um. Well, I think the journey to truly understand and to have the desire to seek information it starts with a with with, with a path to understand who you are. You know. Um. We all get on this path for knowledge. They say the most powerful knowledge is knowledge of self. So that is when the quest began, when you begin to understand who are you, who am I? So in this journey, you travel every aspect of yourself. You travel every aspect of your parents to understand what has cultivated you. And through our lineage, through our history, through our heritage, you know, um, we are the sum of some mighty warriors some mighty people that endure some things in life. And there's things in life that we got to understand in terms of what they went through to truly understand who we are. So like, for example, my parents went to school before integration. They were children in Jim Crow. So it was a lot of aspects in their home, their mother who had nine, 12 children. Uh, in a Jim Crow system, they had a mentality of protecting them. You know, we always hear they say, son, be humble. Son, be humble. Son, don't never feel like you are the most important in the room. So our grandparents as black Americans told their children that as a form of protection, because if you show too much pride in the faces of racism and segregation, you could become a threat. And if, they, if you become a threat, then you will be subject to a harsh reality. So our parents raised us. We, we, we have grown over the years to become more freely to think. But our parents who went through Jim Crow are raising a young man now who's roaring, whose light is shining bright. And we saying, humble yourself, son. Dim your light. So I got one me, trap, me. Trap, you don't you don't got warmed up. I, I triggered something to warm you up, didn't I? Yeah, because it gets deep, man. And it's so deep that we got to understand. We got to understand where we are. Because we have been so much uh in a herd mentality. We give you Juneteenth as a holiday, and we don't stop to even think. We just hurry to go through the gates. <laughs> as let me ask you, uh Trap as the title of this conversation states the rise of juneteenth what's to come from it what's to come from that rise oh uh, self-pride love understand dignity respect honor you know, uh, everything we do for us must be to empower us inwardly for our soul, for our mind. What's to come out of it is to get back to when we were at strength. If Juneteenth is about heritage, if Juneteenth is about history, then we must understand the stronghold that guided us through that. That was family. That was love. That was the mother, the father, the child. So what comes out of this joy, this arising of pride and culture must become respect and love for one another, mm. to truly see each other as sisters and brothers. 
you know, Troy, we were talking early in reference to something that you, you, is, you, you, what I'm getting ready to say is going to coincide with what you just said. And it's something that you say a lot. And you also have a song title up on it. We all we got, we all we need. And the brothers down in Greenville stated they want to sit at a table, say that we, we, we as a people work so hard to sit at the table. And I have problems with that because why do we feel we need to sit at other people's tables without sitting at our own tables and rising up Juneteenth from our table versus going to other people's tables? Just as we did, when I say we, I mean my ancestors, your ancestors. They rose up as a people at one point in time and they didn't have to sit at nobody else's table. So what makes our brothers and sisters think that we have to go and sit at other tables in order to rise? Well, like you say, we all we got, we all we need. And the catch to that is the we. You know, who do you consider your we? Uh, who, like you say, well, in America, at one time, at one particular time in America, See, we was understood generally because we was together. We were segregated together. No matter how much money you had, no matter how much education you had, we were together. So we had a clear cut understanding of who we talking about. But now the lines have got kind of great. So we could be in general, you know, I always say this, that America, America used classism as the makeup and mascara to hide the bumps on her face of racism. So when you use classism now, see, we has become vast. I don't associate with those who still in the lower part of the community. I don't associate with those who don't live in my tax bracket. I associate with my class. So now when I'm dealing with my class at my table, <laughs> hey, look, my way is different than yours. So who are we to determine who's at somebody else's table? We just must understand who's at our own. Correct. Correct. And, 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 and that's where I was going with it with the guys is I felt like they were they were mistakenly and trying so trying to get at another table so that they can get more money to get more noise to get a bigger reaction down in Greenville. And I'm like, guys, some things takes time. And I haven't heard Greenville doing um, a Juneteenth until here recently so guys my thing is if it takes five years ten years so be it galveston been doing it <laughs> for a long time and throughout years even as a youngster i never heard anything about galveston in juneteenth so look how long they've been at it you know what i'm saying well, and, and that's why i said that when you really put it in this context it's a particular story it's a particular story about a particular people at a particular time. It's just like LB, if Concord had a phenomenon, or let's just say back in 2016, when Keith Lamont Scott got killed by the police, Charlotte had a riot. That riot reached international news. I mean, everybody, the whole world saw Charlotte, North Carolina for its injustice. Within two years of that injustice in Charlotte, North Carolina, we had black leadership in 
every position of Charlotte. I'm talking about a police chief, a mayor, a district attorney, a fire chief, the city manager, the school superintendent, uh, the world, America showed the world, look, this is Charlotte who had one of the biggest riots known on TV. We love our African-American people, but as deep as that story is, that's something near and dear personal to us in a history that we experienced. Mm -hmm. And only if you're a particular Charlottean, you might not even remember what I'm talking about. So we must keep things in its proper context because when we don't put it in its proper context, we become a herd mentality and we begin to lose the point of things and just do what's trending. You know, like even right now, LB, when you look at these Juneteenth festivals, you see a lot of African culture. A lot of them use dashiki. They beat the drums. But in 1865, in the aspect of roots, we were Toby. Kuta Kente no longer existed. And if I take the children of those people today and tell them that they are African, they will say, no, I'm not. I'm not no African. So even when we look at our celebration, what are we really doing? Do we understand the point? Because if we truly understand the point, like you say, we will be down in Gavin, Texas right now, truly understanding the essence of those brothers and sisters who was held captive mm -hmm. by some patriotic white men. What you saying that, uh, uh, Trap, let me ask you, um, what can we do to uh, educate the people, enlighten the people on the truth of our history? What can well, we do? Well, I, I want you to understand this. When we say our history, see, this is what the we all we got, we all we need means in real life. You got to understand that you are enough. You powerful. You have a story. You have a lineage. There's a whole lot of things that was necessary to bring you to this moment. So the more and more we understand that there's a power invested in each and every last one of us that says we are in the fight. And if we truly understand who we are and we realize that we have one another, we all we need. So to really get to the bottom of this, look in your own life, ask your mother, ask your father, look into yourself. They experience the same things that you seek to understand. Those experiences are within you. Learn who you are so that you can love yourself and so that you can love each other and one another. I say we kill ourselves and we don't really care because when we look into the mirror, we don't see a God standing there. Mm. That's, there we go. There we go. You stepped on, you stepped on some toes on that one. Trap. Last year, I had a chance to go to the uh, African American Museum up in D.C. Um, actually, almost right across the street, uh, down the street from the White House. And yeah. um, I had a relative who got kind of emotional. And they're younger than you and I. But they got a little emotional in reference to what all they were seeing. The, the pain, as you see in the background here, ladies and gentlemen. This right here is a lynching. And my relative, by seeing stuff like this, my relative got uh, emotional. And what I told one of my other relatives is, when I look at stuff like this right here, it empowers me. Because it makes me think, what am I doing today that I can say my ancestors are proud of me? And if I'm not doing what I feel my ancestors will be proud of, then I should be. So I take what I see on the screen and say, hey, ancestors, I'm going to do better. Because you didn't die. You didn't fight. You didn't go through all that you went through for me to be sitting around and smoking marijuana all day, drinking alcohol all day, shucking and jiving all day. Ladies and gentlemen, my time shucking and jiving your time today means fooling around not applying yourself so 
when I see stuff like that, it empowers me. What does it do for you, uh, uh, Trap? Oh, uh, I call it fighting the good fight. It inspires me to fight the good fight. But we got to understand, man, all the way back then to this moment, a man is as real as his reason. Nothing gives a man more of a reason than his woman. Together, him and his woman create children. That is called a family. Then, a black man risked it all against that mob for one reason and one reason only, to survive and provide his family what they need. So that's fighting the good fight, man. And I got to say this right now, because I stand in truth, in truth and I stand in power. And I stand in all my granddaddies and grandmamas and my mama and my daddy that made me to bring me here. We undefeated. We undefeated. And you are too. So that's what all them pictures make me do. They make me realize I'm a warrior fighting a good fight. And as long as I stand on a solid reason, mother, father, and child, my family, hey, look, I got to tell somebody. <laughs> See how that works. <laughs> I'm going to reel you in, uh, 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 Trap. Um, when you started gathering information and knowledge to empower your soul, how did it make you feel internally? Uh, well, you know, this journey is real, man. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to say I've been on this journey 19 years, man. And my whole life, you know, I've been an intuitive child. You know, I've been me since my birthday. I'm talking about my very first day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I always knew I had a leadership type of character within me. But when I was 24 years old, uh, me and my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, our child was stillborn. And leading up to that, man, um, I, was, I was a natural born leader and just always fought for righteousness. So being so happy, man, to be about to have my son and my son not make it, you know, um, it was that why me, you know. And my aunt told me, she said, you know, Trav, God don't make mistakes. And the way I took that in my mind and the way I digest that was, so you telling me it's a God somewhere that says this is necessary for me. And my journey began there to understand what is the purpose of my life. What is this all about? Because I have been a committed child and still to this day, I can stand right now and say as a grown man, I commit to love and righteousness and I go all I got to fight the good fight. So 19 years ago, that's what began this journey. It was a journey to understand who I am man, and what I'm made of. And that led me through history. That led me through emotional aspects of my mind. That led me through every aspect of the total man to truly understand. And it ain't that I know now, and it may be that I never know, because the journey will go where I may never know. But I'm just on it, man. And it's a beautiful thing, and it's a powerful thing. And one of the things the elders used to tell me, they say this could be a lonely journey, Trav. I say because what you're seeking to understand ain't common to the general man. I say, well, what you mean? They say you're going through a path of love. Uh, Ecclesiastes 118 says, a man that seeketh knowledge and wisdom will be sorrow and sad. So this journey get real, man. This journey get real, LB. So I don't take it lightly, and I want to say this to anybody. Don't take it lightly because when I'm coming through athletics and we training, they say when it's hurting, that means it's working. Mm. So when you go through the deception stages to realize, so you mean to tell me this ain't what it really is? Don't be hurt by the deception, but understand what the intent behind the deception is. Because he who understands the truth may be free, but free from what? So that's what this journey is about. And more and more you understand it, and more and more you grow in it, your light show, 
your light glow. Mm -hmm. And Trap, you wrote a song the ones that attract other ones, and when y'all together, y'all say, "Ooh, we is so powerful." I don't, See, I don't mean, you know, let me Trap. say this one time because the spirit flow. I, I know you hot, baby. I know you hot. You know, my grandma and them used to talk like this. They used to say, "We's a tired. We's a hungry. We's a don't want to go nowhere." Uh -oh. See, we looked at them as ignorant, but they were still in their mind. They wasn't masters and professors of the English man words yet. So they spoke from their soul, which sounded like ignorance, but they knew that we's all we get and we's all we need. So the more intelligent we got and the more we lost our soul, we say, ah. Trev, it sounds like you trying to tell somebody something, man. And you, you got a hit on it. When you when you when you lay it down, tell somebody. We're gonna sit back and we're gonna listen to what you said when you meant that word. Tell somebody. Tell it, man. Here it is. Good God Almighty, Trap. Good God Almighty. Trap. All right. In, I didn't see a big uh, thing in Charlotte, in Gastonia. I didn't see anything big. Several years ago, I went to a big uh, Juneteenth event in Gastonia, and it was, it was, it was, it was decent. It was really, really nice. I don't know if the weather has something to play with it this year, you know, with us having to rain and everything, and the people just didn't put it together but my motto on the gathering is this if i can get three people to come to whatever i'm doing and those people enjoy themselves i did a job well done what's your take in reference to us supporting one another and what's your expectation on support meaning do you need a big crowd or just a several few what satisfy you when it comes to uh, participation and support? Um, I got a saying that says, we all we got, we all we need. Each one teach one, each one reach one. If you are that one, you are enough. Um, support means those that sincerely in the moment with you. You know, they say, if you look, you can't find the truth nowhere because the truth is now here. That's the same word, N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. The truth is nowhere because the truth is now here. I always understand the powers in the moment. So those that sincerely with you in the moment, those that sincerely will come to be with you to pay you some attention for whatever you have to offer and give. See, if you look outside that moment, you ain't gonna never find it nowhere. 
See, that's why we suffer, because we look for love in all the wrong places. That's what that song was about. I got to tell somebody. I'm talking about a power that's invested in you. When you represent that power, that power comes out of you. That power shines radiant and light, just like the sun do. So those that's honored and blessed and fortunate to share the light with you and vice versa, you must understand they are enough because that becomes your we. And we all we got. We all we need. I feel trapped. You know, every year Juneteenth is our renewed Million Man, Million Woman March. Because that's that one weekend just like what Farrakhan and the nation of the NOI did. They g gathered us that one weekend that on that one specific date and said, Hey, as you, like you said, no matter, we all come from different sectors. You know, some came from cross seas back over to, you know, be a part of the million man, million woman March. We all we got, we're all we need. And if we do that because we are, the money spenders of America, with us stop spending money, I mean, the stock market falls tremendously. If we stop spending money, they keep telling us that over and over, we do not accept that concept. And you state clearly in one of your songs, we all we got, we all we need. You state that over and over every Thursday on your hero training. We yeah. all we got, we all we need. Why come we're not accepting that? Well, 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 you know, it's like take like Google Earth, right? If you put a general area in United States, it shows you United States. Then you go to a state, it shows you the state. Then you go to a city, it goes to a city. Then you go to your street. It shows you the street. Then you put your address, and then it shows you, right? Mm -hmm. So the same way we come down to you, the same way we go out. Yes, we are brothers. Yes, we, we, we emotionally understand our position in America. We black men. We have black families, right? But as they go out now, we are citizens. We are Americans. So just as much as we have our own culture, we have our culture within American culture. See, we can't fight with American culture. See, sometimes we can get so tricky between wanting to be or understand our identity. So that's something that really happened to us through slavery. We lost our identity. So because we don't have an identity that, 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 that resonated in our soul, we're subject to be any damn thing. Mm -hmm. You understand how this works? That's why the Christian, the fraternities, the gangs, everything has power within our spirit and our soul in American culture because we desire to be identified as something, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why the we get tricky. Mm -hmm. See, I could be in a room with my brothers crying about we, and they say, are you Christian? I say, no. Well, I don't really understand if you're a part of the we or not. And I say, but no, <laughs> no, we are deeper than that. Yeah, I feel you. I, I, I'm like that 100%. Don't title me. Don't put a title on me. Than that. Mm -hmm. You understand Most what I'm saying? So, so, so we must, we must, we, we must, you know, when I talk about we, man, I'm talking about the minorities. You know, we are minorities in America. But when you understand wordplay, this is what I call words to grow on. When you understand the root word of minority is a minor. A minor is a child, one who has an undeveloped mind. So when they treat us like minors through minorities, they're saying that our mind haven't developed to see the bigger picture. So we must grow up. Stop thinking like minorities. <laughs> you know, Trap, earlier today, I was I was going over some information and looking at other people's, uh, other cities' uh, Juneteenth events. And they never fail, man. I started seeing information where they want to state, you know, this catastrophically happened on Juneteenth in this city and this happened in this city. That was their thing to talk about. 
their thing to talk about wasn't the greatness of what happened in that city with Juneteenth. It was the catastrophic things that happened. And it, it would have happened whether it was Juneteenth or not. But just so happened to Juneteenth, they tied that catastrophic catastrophic uh, event. I ain't going to call it an event happening with the Juneteenth event. And I'm like, that right there is how they manipulate other groups of people and make them feel the things that we're doing is so negative so uh unrelated make people not want to join and come out and have a good time and understand what it's like being black what we think about on an everyday black basis when we are encountered with the same stuff that you're seeing in the background of this screen right now it hasn't stopped for people to say why do we keep talking about slavery what's going on behind this screen there was one thing that was on the screen um not that one it was and it was amazing it was actually one of the first times i've actually seen it i haven't seen where there it is right there's coming up where there was a sign that said no negroes no no dogs no negroes no mexicans it's the first time i've seen that it's coming up next and and, and that, that over that blew me over man that, that really blew me over because i mean i had no clue if anything i would have thought it would have said no indians instead of no negroes so my thing is did they accept indians back then then who was the indians i ain't gonna talk about that right i'm not not on this one i ain't gonna talk about it but yeah. it, it was it was it was very ironic man yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go back and see if we can find that where it said that there it is right there ain't that something no dogs yeah. no negroes no mexicans i never seen that sign yeah that's powerful man yeah, yeah. that's powerful yeah you know, and to this day yeah. we still have that to this day we still have it and i feel that's the reason why it's very important for us to have these juneteenth events so that we can enlighten people what we went through so when they're the the little things that they don't see that we see maybe by them seeing some of this today it'll make them start realizing some of the things they be hearing on the job yeah. some of the things they be hearing at some of the pool parties they go to to realize this slavery thing it ain't over with it's still here well, well when well, i say well. it's still here you know what i mean but i'm gonna let you tell the people what i mean when i say slavery is still here well, well, let's go back to the June 10th and to the, to the true context of the history, right? So, 1865, they went to Galvin, Texas. They freed the last known captive slaves on June 19th, 1865. In that small town of Galvin, Galveston, Texas, they went to downtown courthouse and they had a celebration. They danced all night. They parted all night with the soldiers. With the soldiers. They sent just as much soldiers down there as they had slaves. So every slave almost through 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 the matter comparing had their own soldier to protect them while they danced and said, We are free. We are free. And as the early morning came, on June 20th. <laughs> They say, what that, what we do now? And the owner say, well, I tell you what, I ain't let you go cause y'all produce 600 pounds of sugar a month and 40 bales of tobacco a month. I just couldn't let you go, man. Yeah, hey, what I'm gonna do? They say, well, what, what, what we gonna do? They say, well, I tell you what, y'all free and y'all ain't slaves. Uh-oh. Y'all sharecroppers. And they say, well, what's a sharecropper? They say, you just work and you stay in your houses and I can't tell you what to do. You just wake up and come to work and I'll pay you a little bit and you're going to share the land with me. They say, that show sound good. So they began to work and work and work just like they was, but now their mind is free, but their body is still doing the same thing. Is it boss? 
It's time to get paid. He said, well, let me tell you how a free man work in America. You got to pay where you stay. And this is what I charge. This is what you make. They say, well, I'll be doggone, boss. We ain't make no money. We still working for free. He said, hey, freedom ain't free. So here we are. Mm. 200 years later. Uh-oh. Freedom still ain't free. Freedom still ain't free. As much a man require, as more as a man desire. See, you got to understand when you became free. See, 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 as a particulars of a black man in America. See, see, I, I got I got all right to go out and get it. If you want it, go get it. But the referees might not be on your side because you're kind of on the away side of the bleachers. They say a black man got to work twice as hard to get just as much. Well, if it's truth to that, then let's train our sons to work twice as hard. Because little Jimmy been looking out the window before 1863 trying to get a reassurance of his daddy. Daddy, so you telling me, daddy, when they general uh, uh, Granger come and set them free, daddy, I got to go out there and work against them. He said, hell yeah, son, but don't you worry. We're going to fuck their mind up a little bit. Excuse my language, but you got to understand the severity to feel how I get real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> Trap. Yeah. Look at that gentleman right there. He was reading that sign. He has the skill set. But what he don't have is the correct color. Help wanted. White only. Now, I say that to say this here, Trap. There's far too many times where our brothers are discriminated against, stated that they won't work. That right there is one indi indication right there as to why the brothers won't work. They won't work if they can't work because they're not getting employed. Well, well. And see. kill the stipulation. Now, we do have some people. I mean, it's easy for people to say, well, you know, I know somebody who don't want to work. Uh, come on, man. We ain't talking about the masses. What we're talking about is we have too many brothers and sisters who have that skill set. But to this day, because of what's going on in that sign in the background, it still consists to this day. But it's in a different format. I say that to say this, you can go down Highway 16 up in Newton, Hickory, North Carolina, and you'll see a big old rebel flag, Confederate flag. You can also go down uh, 40, Interstate 40, and you'll see a rebel flag. You can also go down, I think it's 150 in Lincolnton, not too far from Lincolnton, I think it's East Lincolnton, is it East Lincolnton or West Lincoln? One of the Lincolnton high schools. Yeah. And you'll see a big Confederate flag right beside a Dollar General store. But I went all the way out west to Nebraska and didn't see not one. Talk to me now. Well, when you're dealing with the Southern type of culture, man, you know, um, it's two different worlds, you know what I mean? Um, the Southern culture, you're dealing with agriculture, you know, uh, you know you, you're dealing with farming, agriculture, you're dealing with all the elements of, of, of the Southern climate. You see what I'm saying? So this is more so, and you're dealing with the shores. So this is more so where the African-American lineage began in the southern parts of the state, right? But we're here for the agriculture purpose and the agriculture reason. But this goes into when you're looking at the manufacturing jobs, where we say, I just need a job. Well, that's where the whites went. Um, like you say, I, 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 we all got those cousins that moved up north uh, to evade the harsh realities of the south. 
And they say, man, I ain't never experienced racism. I don't know what that Jim Crow like. Well, they come down here on vacation and say, yo, I remember when I went to North Carolina back in the day, yo, the white people was bugging. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's just a culture type thing. But well, in the let, South- Let me reel you back though, Trail. Per this right here, per this right here, as far as, far as agriculture, we're made to be out there in the sun. Well, that's how why pig, we were here. How pigment allows us to be out there in that sun working. So you would think that these companies will want us out there in that sun because we we can endure it. We can last longer. There's less breaks coming off of us. Well, well, you got to put it in context, right? Let's just say help one. Uh, and this goes back to the we all we got, we all we need. Um, right here in Charlotte, Grilltown has a rich culture. Um, my great grandfather was one of the founders of Grilltown, right? Uh, that's right off of Wendover Road, Wendover and Billingsley Road, that whole sector, right? And Bill Billingsley had 400 acres in the later parts of 1800, right? And he sold part to the city, but this community had two historically black communities, Cherry and Grilltown. They had their own school, they had their own church, they had their own grocery stores, they had their own hardware stores. There was a thriving community, and this community was thriving through um, craftsmen and skill sets such as brick masonry, carpentry, um, all of these type of things. So when we associated working, it was all about survival. It was all about what was needed. Our parents, well, my parents and those generations, they were children of the baby boomers. Their grandparents had nine kids because having them babies was guaranteeing help to work you see what i'm saying so we knew what work was and means of survival we had skill sets we knew how to work on things that's how through the rich culture of an african-american culture we invented almost 80 to 90 percent of all technology within the last hundred years because we were used to working with our resources mm -hmm. So the more and more we begin to look outside of ourselves to stand at a sign saying, please let me in. Or to stand at a, at a cafe to say, um, please let me eat with you. What happened to us within our we that we felt the need to be validated to eat with them? See, that's that's more so about why we're standing in front of those signs more than creating our own businesses because we have those examples such as black wall street we have those examples such as grill town we have examples of true realities when we and, and those are the stories trap that need to be told man because uh, that information alone when you talk about Biz billings lee road i never knew that i mean that's not being told in charlotte school system it should be but it's not and that's a local black history fact there and see with stuff like that man it brung it brung to the point of of something that we had grabbed and luckily we found it it's an old clip that minister farrakhan had uh said back at one of his uh teachings and it was for that brother or sister who felt like they've been striking down they know they got what it takes but they are disheartened because of how they keep getting knocked down. Brothers and sisters, check this out right here. Oh, don't laugh. Learn. Learn. Because you're on your way up. And the things that tempt people to fall, you and I are not free from that temptation, nor from the weakness that will cause us to stumble and fall. When you laugh at somebody else's fall, white or black, rich or poor, your enemy or your friend, you are laughing and opening a way for your own demise when you do that. Because to laugh and not learn, to make mockery and not to understand, is to make the same mistake yourself. Did you hear me? And, and I like that, you know, to make mockery of Juneteenth. As I felt what I seen when I was uh, looking over to see what other cities was doing today, I felt they were making a mockery. I felt they were laughing 
you know, the other stations that was putting this mess up in reference to the drama things that was happening around Juneteenth. And we got to over, we got to overcome that. We got to overlook it because we got too much against us to have our brothers and sisters to see stuff like that and say, Hey, I don't want to go and be a part. What do you say about that? Um, well, in, in the context of, of, of what the Reverend Farrakhan said was, ain't nobody above the bull child, man. But it'll make you better if you're real enough to deal with it. So one of the things that we got with each other that has pulled us, when you look at those pictures in the background, so we had a sense of unity that we had a togetherness that pulled us through some tough times, man. One of those things was empathy, the ability to understand the feelings of another, compassion. So when you see your brother man going through something and you realize you ain't above it, a powerful man is one who can resist the things he desire to protect the ones he love. At so many moments, we all can have powerless moments where we fall. But in those moments, we're surrounded by love, so they only last a moment. And I say, L. Reed, get your mind right, bro. And he can look at me and see me in the despair moment of falling, a weakness, of whatever it may be, and say, hey, bro, let's go. But if you don't have that sincerity within you to understand a brother, then yeah, like he say, um, it's a movie for those type of people that come together with all their type of characters. And we can look at those type of movies and see all the mathematics of destruction and anger and hurt that goes into those type of movies. But like I say, the we becomes powerful enough to know that my community is those that have a common sense of unity. I'm a father, I'm a husband. Me and my wife together are parents. We fight for a reason to cultivate our family. And if I associate with those type of people and those are the people that can't make the cast of my reality, then I ain't never got to worry about a man picking at me when I'm down. Trap, I just realized this, man, as you were talking. And you're talking about bringing it coming to reality. This picture right here says they began setting up schools less than three months after they were told they were free. Look at that school, man. They came together and built their own school less than three months after being, well, they're really two years free, but three months after they've known to be free. Look what they done. Now, go back to the earlier conversation trap when we were talking in reference to us not wanting or needing to sit at other people's tables. We can sit at our own table and do what they did right there and build a school for us, by us. You know what? You know what else happened in that town approximately three months after that? The first chapter of the KKK was created too. Wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> see how that worked though you know what I mean I just wanted to say you know um, there's always but, but, two but sides look at the, look the positivity of that though Trap look less than three months later look what they done yeah that ain't no shack yeah that look better than some people's houses today yeah and some of our brothers and sisters don't even have a house renting somewhere well, versus let me, let let me go back to the story about uh, Charlotte, Grilltown, and Cherry. My granddad was born in 1920, right? My granddad would take me through Miles Park and show me the tree where his house was where he was born. These skilled group of black men that built their own neighborhood called Grilltown and Cherry, they built all the houses in the Miles Park area. They built all those houses. My granddaddy could ride down the street and look at the mansions of Charlotte and say, I dug the basement out for that. My daddy did that. Such and such done that. Such and such done that. 
So even when you look at now the average grandchild of these strong, wise, powerful black men ride through Miles Park in these prestigious neighborhoods to feel like, man, I, can, I can't even imagine living in something like this, not knowing that their grandfathers built this. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that school and you say, man, look how beautiful this school is. Man, they was masters of builders. Now they just had a reason to do it for themselves. Exactly. That's why the slave master didn't want to let him go. Because he cultivated the most powerful beings on planet Earth. And to open your mind up to show you how powerful we was in America at that particular time. Every four years, they have a world athletic event called the Olympics. America. America brings the ones that she molded and cultivated to her games and everything she put her negroes in they win and she looks at the families of the world and say did you make them like i did see how that work man that's how powerful we are we got to know that they know it they know it we got to know it how do we get us to know that? That's oh. the key. That's the key. How do we open the door to get others to come in and know that? Well, I'm gonna tell you, man. Um, I got a I got a covational camp that started July 10th. We're gonna have some powerful young men, and I tell them every morning we do a word of the day. I say most people every day, and I say most, and I just hope you're a part of most. Most people every day start their day off in the mirror, brushing their teeth and washing their face and looking in their eyes. Just start right there and say, I love you. I believe in you. You're powerful. You're strong. Start your day off. In the morning with that. If you're listening to me right now, start your day off in the morning. And as you get a routine to begin to see it and realize it, you begin to see it in others' eyes. And they begin to see it in yours. And I promise you, it'll begin to happen. And the we around you will become so powerful. You're going to have to tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> my God, oh my. That's how we do it. He said we got to tell someone. Y'all heard that song earlier. I love that joke. That's how we try. You have, uh, like every Thursday, I think it's going across the street now, every Thursday you have a hero training session at 9.30 on Facebook. Uh, is there any other time periods you do uh, live uh, training sessions? Well, right now, man, it's just, um, like I say, my show is uh, every Thursday, man, on Trap here on Facebook Live. Um, it's hero training, man. Um, it's about understanding the mentality of understanding you are the one. You are enough. It's a power invested in you, man. And once you realize, man, that it's in you like it's in any man ever created, man. It's in you. They say we suffer because we look for love in all the wrong places. When you understand how it works, you can work it. If you don't understand how it works, and nine times out of ten, it's getting worked on you. Mm -hmm. I just want to help us get in position to fight the fight. Mm -hmm. Old man told me one time, he said, son, you want to make it to the top, don't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I hate to break your bubble because it ain't no top. You're going to have to climb. Uh -oh. You can't climb no more. Uh -oh. So that's what it's about, waking up every day mm -hmm. to run the play. First down, first down, touchdown. That's awesome. Trap. You, you always have a seat uh, at the table here at Hot Topics or at the round table session. You always have a seat there. Um, I enjoyed you coming on, man, and um, sharing your words, sharing your heart, sharing your spirit with us. Yeah. Uh, when me and you sit down and talk from time to time, I mean, we, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a telephone talker. I did enough of that back in the days with the ladies. And um, I'm not looking for a lady now, so I don't need to talk on the phone forever today to nobody on this planet. And I don't do it. But 
with Trap and another brother we call Wood for some odd reason. When me and these two guys get on the phone at separate times, we find ourselves on the phone for two and three hours. And sometimes I ask, man, how long we've been on the phone? Because I generally don't do this. <laughs> it's, it's that spirit connection. And I'm going to say that to say this. When I said you have a seat at the table, I mean, it is what it is. And that's the way all of our brothers and sisters need to start feeling, that you have a seat at the table, but you got to come to the table with a clean spirit. You can't come to the, the table with some mess on your spirit. Your spirit got to be clean. It can be hurt. It can be damaged, but it got to be clean. And every time I talk to you and my brother Wood, your spirits are always being clean and I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, I respect you. I tip my hat to your brother for all that you do. I don't get to check uh, all of your hero training sessions, but I do chime in when I can. And ladies and gentlemen, if you get a chance on a Thursday, check them out. You're going to find you go. His training is for everyone for Young adults, children, older adults, elders. It's not just for his age group. It's not, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to find something there from my brother, Trap P. Well, me saying that, Trap, I'm going to give you last word. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Y'all be good. You got the last word, though, Trap. Yeah. Um, check me out on YouTube, Layback704. That's one word, Layback704. Um, my music is called Hood Soul. Um, it's one of the most soulful, powerful music in the world, man. And I'm going to leave out with some Hood Soul, man. It says, uh, you say you want to live your life. Well, what does it look like? You say you want to be free. Well, what you want to be free from? You say you want to live your life. Well, what does it look like? You say you want to be free. What do you want to be free from? You ain't got to answer it now, but think about it. When you see it, you can be it. When you see it, you can be. The revolution won't be televised because it begins in your mind. When the body shall be full of light, it's because it comes from within. See the power, see the love, see the victory. I love you. We all we got. We all we need. Until next time, brother. Keep it easy. <laughs>